Hello! In this video, I'll show you how to get started with Elm Watch. First, we're going to create a regular basic Elm project and then we're going to add Elm Watch to it. Here, I used a global installation of Elm that I already had, but you can install Elm in any way you want. Elm created this elm.json for us. Now let's create the first elm file. I'm going to use the default example in the Elly application. Then let's start elm reactor to try it out. And there we have it. Elm has created this Elm stuff folder, so let's create a git ignore and ignore that folder. And now we are ready to make our first commit. Basic Elm setup. Next up, we want to migrate from Elm Reactor to using a custom HTML file. So instead of running Elm Reactor, we're going to run elm make, we're going to point out our entry point elm file, the output is going to be build slash elm.js. And now we have that built elm JavaScript file. Let's go ahead and go to git ignore and ignore it. Now we need a HTML file to load that file for us. Let's add some boilerplate, a div tag to render the elm in. It's going to have an ID of app, a script tag pointing to the built file, another script tag which says window.elm.main.init, and we pass our div. Now I should be able to open that file, and it's working. Cool, let's commit that. Custom HTML. Now we're ready to start using Elm Watch. First step is to install it. Then we can run Elm Watch init. That creates a elmwatch.json file. Let's have a look at it. It has put some example JSON in here. You can have a name that is mostly interesting for when you have multiple apps. I'm just going to go with my cool app. The input is source slash main.elm. The output is build slash elm.js. Now let's try to recreate this build slash elm.js with elmwatch instead of elm. So I'm going to start with removing the build folder, reloading the app, now it doesn't work as ex expected, and then let's have a look at the elm make command again. We've already specified all of this in the JSON file, so we can go ahead and delete that, and then Let's call Elm Watch instead of Elm. And now the file has been created again. And the app is working. Now for the fun part. Instead of running make, we can run hot. This starts a watcher with hot reloading. When I refresh, the first thing you're going to notice is this little piece of UI. It tells you that we're connected to the Elm Watch server, and this is the last time we recompiled. And the app is still working. If I go and edit the Elm file, for example, I, if I wanted to change this one to one with letters and save, the page is automatically updated and any state is kept. If I make a mistake, like a syntax error, 
there's this little animation going telling me that there's an error. It tells me to check the terminal to see errors. In the terminal, you can see the standard Elm errors in full color. But even though you have errors, you still have the latest compiling version to play around with. And you all always have this animation going um, to remind you that you're running old code. Let's go ahead and fix the error again. Another thing you can do is expand this and really easily switch to debug mode. Let's add some state, open the debugger, and there you got it, the standard Elm debugger. Cool, let's commit that. Since we installed Elmwatch with uh, NPM, we've got this node modules folder, so we need to go ahead and ignore that. I would like to throw away those little changes we made in the Elm file and then commit the changes. Add Elm Watch. And that's pretty much it to know about Elm Watch. It's basically a drop in replacement for Elm Make, but with a watcher and hot reloading. But finally, I would like to talk about one slightly more advanced feature that you can use if you want to. It's called post-process. Using post-processing, you can modify the compiled JavaScript from Elm. Let's get started. So the first thing you need to do is go to your elmwatch.json and add a new field called post-process. And in here, you need to specify a command that should run after each comp uh, compilation. I'm going to go with node and execute a file called um, post process.mgs. And actually, I'm going to go with something called Elm Watch node. You can read more about it in the Elm Watch readme, but it's basically the same as node, but faster. Now we need to go ahead and create this file. And by the way, you can check out this side to see how Elm Watch reacts to our, our changes all the time. And now it's complaining that the file doesn't exist and so on and so forth. So let's create it. And in here, we have to do export default a function. The function receives an object with a code property. And that's a string, and that is the contents of the JavaScript that Elm makes. The simplest thing I can do is simply return that code unchanged. And now it's working again. To make it slightly more in interesting, let's add some extra code at the end. I'm going to add a little console.log hello in there. And now if we open the build file and go all the way to the end, you can see that it says console.log hello. And if we go to the browser, open the console, there we have it, hello. So if you'd ever wanted to patch the JavaScript code that Elm creates, here's the place to do it. Something else you might want to do is minify your code. To do that, we are going to go to the Elm Watch repository, which has an example of a post-process file that minifies using ESBuild and Uglified.js. Yes. So we're just going to copy all of that. And while we're working, we could go ahead and install those two, ESBuild and Uglified.js. Yes. And then I'm going to replace all of this with the copied code. If you have a look at it, you can see that it's only when the compilation mode is optimized that we actually run minify. In debug and standard mode, we just return the code unchanged. If we go to the browser, go back to our page and switch to optimize mode, then the minification is now running. So if we go and have a look at the build file 
and let's scroll to the to the top. At first, you might think it's not optimized at all, but if you go to the very bottom, you can see this line which looks very optimized. So the last line is the actual Elm code, and everything above is some extra code that Elm Watch injects only during development, uh, which is needed to create this little UI. Finally, if we go and uh, close the watcher and instead run make with the optimized flag, that is also going to run the post-processing, uh, including the minification. If you would like to see a more advanced example of all of this, then you can always go to this uh, example folder in the Elm Watch repo, which I've got locally here, and you can start it up. And it starts um, Elm Watch, ES build, and a little dev server all at once. If we go into this dev server and open it up, you get a little page with some example apps. And if you go into one of them, you get a slightly more advanced example to play around with, with Elm Watch in it. And that's basically all I wanted to show in this little demo. Uh, I hope you found it interesting and uh, want to try out Elm Watch.